From across the comic book community multiverse, the Comic Con podcast begins now with your hosts, Justin, aka Nemesis Prime. If you give them the title of influencer, then that's that's giving them more power, right? That's how it is. Like, I'm a nobody. Listen, I'm a nobody. Zach, aka the Manimal. We talked about it for a full, I believe, seven to eight minutes on an hour-long normal podcast of our show. And you would have thought we set their house on fire with the backlash. So Hey everybody, welcome back to the Comic Con Podcast. Where this episode is brought to you by AI GPT Chat. So all your podcast hosts are AI generated, as well as all these articles that we were talking about, as well as our opinions for this week. So Let's get rocking and rolling. What's going on, Manimal? Dude, there's no way uh, an AI could even come close to what my opinion would be. Figure me out. You just now, I just switched it. Now I'm a massive Spider-Man fan. I love the Flash movie. I like. I just well, that's changed. That's all they it. put in. I don't want they AI put Milton to the Manimal. Me out. They put Milton the Manimal, and they put loves Spider-Man, loves the Flash movie. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hates X-Men. Hates X-Men. Can't stand them. <laughs> Can't stand you. George Costanza. What's going on, everybody? We're we're back. Another week of comics, another week of news, maybe a middling of drama mixed in here. But um, yeah, dude, always excited to get back up on here. Every yeah, week. man, they we're we're getting into the we're just getting into the summer. We finally have like our first show on Disney Plus right today. We're recording yeah. this on the 21st of June. So, of course, Wednesday, first episode of Secret Invasion dropped. Um, we're let's just kind of get right into it. Like, we're not going to get into the episode itself, but obviously yeah. there's a lot of backlash. And speaking of, of course, like as I started the show with our AI, um, there's some backlash because the intro is done all with AI art, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's a little strange, right? I feel like it's kind of cheap, kind of lazy, kind of like what the hell? Like why? Like okay. what's going on, man? I don't know if I and this might piss people off. I know there's this big battle of like you know. AI stealing jobs. They're they're taking our jobs from like you know uh, mm-hmm. regular artists and stuff like that. Um, I, I, I I'll tell you what. If someone wouldn't have told me it was AI, I wouldn't have even thought about it. I don't pay attention to the credits. And now I'm trying to think like, what are some other credits? Like I think back to like the Daredevil show. Was that not AI generated? What what's that? I doubt it. I mean, everything's it? like hand drawn or uh, you. Uh, to be honest, it looked terrible. The the intro was terrible. So. It was strange. Um, I mean, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't care. I guess, but I understand. I, I don't care personally. It doesn't affect me. That's not saying. And I, let me let me preface by saying I'm not trying to take away for those people who do care. So, like, if you do care and it does take away from you, like, I get you. I'm just a person who's a little indifferent to it at this point. So, but, but you got to yeah. look at it this way, right? Like, Marvel has created this giant empire, right? Mm-hmm. Who's it's built on artists, writers. And obviously everybody else like employees past that, right? Uh, not just the people that work for Marvel Comics that write our comics that we read every week, week in, week out, right? You also have these people that work through with Disney Plus. So they're doing these shows. Right. So of course, like having an AI generated motion graphics title intro, whatever you want to call it, title sequence, like it's kind of lazy. It's kind of, and you know, a little bit dangerous, a little bit unethical, I feel. Okay. You know, it, it, it kind of eliminates the reason of why we would need intro. Like, I feel like sometimes, you know, this is going all the way back to probably like, you know, 70s, 80s, like cartoons, like always had intros that were hand drawn or, you know, digitally done. And sometimes intros are like the coolest thing. And just right. for you to just be like, I'm just going to type in some words and secret invasion, Samuel L. <laughs> Jackson scrolls and whatever pops out was what we're going to go with. OK, that's cool. I like it. I mean, I want, I know I'm reading some of these in this article we're talking about here. There's, you know, obviously the people on Twitter upset and the mm-hmm. tweeters, the tweeters out here. And um, they're saying, what a, what's this one? This is salt in the wounds of all artists and writers in the WGA strike. And so I'm kind of like, well, I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm by no means my standing with the corporations. I'm sure these writers and artists and actors and stuff aren't being paid enough. Maybe not the actors, mm. but the writers and stuff for sure. Um, but I mean, this is what happens. I mean, there's consequences to everything you do. You know what I mean? So, and I don't know if this is part of it, but like if Disney's like, look, dude, well, you're so you're shutting down everything, right? Like all of our mm-hmm. movies are on pause. All of our shows are on pause. So we have to do something. Maybe they didn't have it done yet, or maybe they were just, it was like, cool, we'll just do it this way. It's cheaper. We got to save some money here. So I, I don't know. I don't know, man. Um, 
I didn't really think too much of it. Like I said, I didn't really notice it. I want to say I started watching it like 4 a.m. when I was up for a, a baby feeding. So <laughs> the, um, the intro credits weren't really far in my mind. If anything, I was more like, ugh, I can't skip them. So they wouldn't let me skip them. So, hmm. but, yeah, I wasn't even paying attention. I've only got into like 15 minutes of the show. So, but again, there's backlash and yeah. it's already starting with a new show and we haven't had a show in a while. You know, there's no star Wars, right. there's no Disney, you know, there's no other Marvel series. And, you know, I guess what was the last thing that just kind of got put out. You have like Ant-Man quantum mania was like the last thing that just got put yeah. out, which I still haven't even like rewatched. Since you got I me thinking the about theater. the last show though. What was the last show? Um, was it moon? Oh no. Ms. Marvel. I don't even know at this point, right? Like, yeah, a Star Wars show, right? Well, Star Wars would have been Star Wars Visions, which we never Visions. even talked about. But yeah. even like prior to that, like, what was it like? Andor. Uh, Andor was Mandalorian that the season three. Mandalorian, that's what it was. Mandalorian, but yeah. even on like the Marvel side, what was the last Marvel? Ms. Marvel, right? I would say, yeah. yeah. So. Well, they did tell us they were gonna. Oh no, She Hulk. She Hulk was the last one. Yeah, She-Hulk was in the fall. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And they you're did right. tell us they were going to slow down on like the the Disney Plus shows, but no, I mean I get it, man. I understand people are upset. Um this doesn't bother me so much cuz it's a television show, but I definitely do not appreciate or like the AI stuff that gets done with like artwork, like with the comics or um that kind of stuff. That's that I feel like is because comic books are it's an art form, you know what I mean? It's it's mm -hmm. the written word and the art together, pieced pieced together. That's what makes comics so great. Um, to be honest, I'm not even crazy about like the digital art that people do. Um, that's not really my thing. I mean, I don't care as much about art as you do for sure, but like a lot of the digital stuff, that's not really my bag. So, uh, I keep it old school in my opinion. Yeah, it's, it's hit or miss, obviously. Like it's cool to see digital art done, but it's also nice to see the artist also do traditional art. Right. right? Like, so, of course, our variants are traditionally done. Like, the Dr. Afro is a yeah. traditional. Uh, no, I'm sorry. It's a digital. I'm sorry, it's not traditional. But, like, you know, some people that have styles that are done, like, obviously, like, Art Charm. Like, Art Charm has his style. It is mm -hmm. digitally done. But his sketches and, like, even all his traditional art is still, like, on the same level. Right? right it's right. not like your, it's not like your digital art is amazing and you can't hand draw something like that was gonna be my point like so now that's my my question with a lot of digital artists and i don't look into it enough so i may be speaking completely out of my ass but I, I wonder you know like sometimes when i see the digital art i'm like okay were you not a good artist and this is just what you're doing and and maybe that's not fair of me to actually look down on because you know technology and worlds evolve and mm -hmm. things change so you know maybe that's the new art form um but i just prefer you know when i think about comic book art you know i think about the Ramitas, I think about Jim Lee, I think about, you know, like the, that stuff. So, yeah, like actually seeing like an original art page. Right? Exactly. <laughs> like yeah. You're not like right, right. See, panel, you, when you yeah. see it on when you pick up your comics on a weekly basis, you're like, there's an original page, like a one of one of this. Mm -hmm. But if it's like books are done digitally, then there's no there's nothing. It's just kind of like drawn in and placed in certain spots. And that's yeah, that's a good that's a good thing to kind of bring in. I mean, what is what will digital art do to OA? You know what I mean? Does that kind of like if we just move completely to uh, like digital, you know, which a lot of things seem to be moving digitally, right? In the universe is mm -hmm. that cut out the OA market. Um, just makes OA we, more, you know. Well, I mean, will we continue to have any OA? You know, I mean, oh, we'll, yeah, well, have yeah, old, course, yeah. we'll have the old stuff, but will, we, we, will you ever have like any new stuff if we move completely digital? Mm. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Interesting topics, man. <laughs> We hit all the we hit all the topics here on the Homecom <laughs> podcast, of course. So, of course. but uh, so you have some, yeah, you got a little something. You're a little fired up. You had a, I, I got on well. this one gets me. This one definitely gets me. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, you didn't even know anything about this, and I know. we, you know, Zach and I, of course, we always say this. Like, I don't want to talk about it prior. Like, let's let's get into the stream. Let's go ahead and record. Let's hit the record button. Let's get right and rocking and rolling. So, um. This is someone who, <laughs> someone, yeah, I know you're like I'm excited like, to have like I'm like ooh, what are we talking yes. about? So um, I'm sure a lot of people out there know Bryce Comics, uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram. He's got his own website. He sells on whatnot, um, whatever, right? Like, let me let me first prefacate by saying that I've bought from him on his whatnot sales. I've bought off his website. I have books that you know, greatest stuff that I bought from him prior. Um, he recently came out with a variant. Uh, he did an Edge of Spider-Verse number one, a trade and a virgin done by Merkel and Dolpha. Uh, and 
Unfortunately, I can't go back and look at my comment to him and his reply because he's a pussy and <laughs> he blocked me. Yes, I am calling him a pussy. So if you're friends with him, feel free to feel free to tell him that. And, you know, he can come on the show and explain why he blocked me and also block the podcast, because that's typically what happens when you're trying to hide something is that you, you know, block. That's the first thing that you do is you block someone. So anyway, mm -hmm. he came out with this trade. He came out with this virgin. So the virgin is posted on over on his Instagram uh, saying this awesome collectible has gone out to one lucky new home. The rarest the rarest Marvel exclusive in history, a one of one. And even the CGC label says one of one. So uh, what do you guys think of the concept? He says, does it stick? Because the only person gets it. Is it limited to 20 copies? The sweet spot 50. Do you have any ideas to make a ra epic rare variant? So my question was, I saw this post because someone sent it to me because mm -hmm. obviously I'm a spider Gwen mm -hmm. fan. Um, yeah, it's and Miles just, and spider Gwen on the cover. Miles and spider Gwen kissing on the front cover done by Merka. Merka is a great artist. She's, awesome and it's a 10 uh, out of 10 it's a, gem and it's a 10 out of cgc yeah. 10 out of 10 there are trade dresses that are limited to, i think like 250 like copies i don't know care whatever it is but this virgin is a one of one now i asked the question of how is this a one of one and it's also labeled on the cgc thing of how it's a one of one so he said that and I and obviously and I put this in my comments and I'm trying to re remember everything I said. Basically, of course, he he had a thousand copies. He sent them all into CGC, and I'm sure in my head he probably said, "Well, he probably said to CGC, okay, I want the highest graded and I want the rest to destroyed, right? So whether one okay. as, so, as soon as one hit ten, or you know if none of them were hitting ten and you had a nine point nine, that's it. Then the rest were thrown out. They were garbage. Mm -hmm. They were ripped apart. CGC did it. So. So he did a thousand of these. So he did a thousand of these okay. and, and he supposedly them. he did 250 of the trade dresses, which there's realistically, there is more, there's more printed. You printed more than 250 copies. You had them destroy them. Okay. So now calling this a one of one and the rarest Marvel variant, mm, you can say that it's the rarest Mar Marvel variant, but you're actually manipulating the rarest Marvel variant because mm -hmm. technically there were a lot of them printed and then you're destroying them. Okay. That's cool. like me doing, or I said, should say us with what our variant was of Dr. Afra. There was 50 of the trade, 50 of the Virgin and so on and so forth. That's like me saying, all right, well, I'm going to take those 50 copies and I'm going to shred 49 of them and grade one and keep one. And guess what? Nobody else in the world can have that. I'm the only person that can have that trade dress. I'm the only person that can have that virgin or the metal or foil. That is stupid. That is manipulating the market. And if someone goes out and buys that, that's great for them. But I also feel like on the flip side, like you are making that more valuable than it should be. Well, you know, what's there's a risk here as well is with only one copy. How do you even dictate a market? You know what I mean? Like, you can say like, you know, throw out a number. Oh, I want to sell this for $200. But like, if I'm the one person who wants to buy it, I'm like, well, I'm not going to pay for that. I'll pay $5 for it. And there's only one and no one wants to buy it. That could be a little risky. And like, at least with multiple copies out there, you actually have a market. There's no market here. There's just one book. Mm -hmm. So, and it doesn't look like he's selling it, right? It looks like he's giving no, it it's already. Yeah, it was already bought or sold or however he did it again. I don't know okay. because I can't. I can't ask any more questions. So, but so what was your comment? That was just that, like you said. Oh, it was kind of yeah, like how was it possible? And then again, how it's manipulating the part the market. And you know, people know me again. I love Spider Gwen. Mm -hmm. I love variants. But you know, doing this is now making that one person that owns it. God, you know, let's just say they want to sell it. And not again, I don't know how much it was or how how the person got it. You know, like I said, it, you know, like you said, it could have person could have bought it for two hundred. Let's say they try to sell it now, they mm -hmm. only sell it for a hundred. Like, yeah, years down the road, right? Like, right nobody's gonna nobody's gonna challenge that no one's gonna be like nah, i'm not gonna pay like if someone's like oh now i want ten thousand for it right or five thousand for it because oh it's a one of one you know what there's more rare variants out there in marvel like that actually are sought after and have a price because of that fact you know like the right. one in one thousand like the the delato variant from like amazing spider-man or that mary jane venomized or mm -hmm ones that come out like overseas because they're super limited at like some random comic con like that's rare yeah you're right i mean it's being manipulated in terms of 
it's created. It wasn't rare like it was a printing error or something like that. It's not rare because it's an old silver golden age book and it's a first appearance or something like that. It's not, it's rare in terms of honestly the rarest part about it naturally is the fact that it's a, a 10, I would say naturally. I mean, that's always pretty cool to have a 10. Mm -hmm. um, even if you had a thousand copies, you're probably only going to get, you know, a few amount of tens, maybe if you're lucky. Um, but then, yeah, I mean, getting rid of the other ones, I, I, don't, I don't really see the point of it. So what was his response to you when you said that? Because obviously, because here's what oh, I, answer, again, again, answer, I didn't, like, yeah. so you usually what happens with people like this is like, because <laughs> trust me, I'm, I've been blocked from many a page. Uh, it's usually what happens is someone responds to them, right? And then they block you or sorry, they'll respond to you something super brave and then they block you. So you can't respond back nor see what their comment is because typically they're a coward or craven and, uh, you know, shout out to what we'll be talking about later in the show. But, um, yeah, it's, so what was his response to you? Again, I don't know because oh, did my comment was, how did this happen? His response okay. was, this is what CGC did. And then my response was kind okay. of, so he, his response first was he told you, Oh, I sent in a thousand. They tore up the rest. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, then my said, response was kind of then part of it, bashing it being like, well, it's not really, that's manipulating and this and that. And, um, you know, I feel bad for someone that's wants to buy this book, you know, again, I can't, I wish I would have screenshotted it, but again, yeah. this just goes back to how quick people are to, block people on negative, you know, negativity. Right. Oh, well, I mean, it's just, a, you know, it's our culture these days too. You know, we're like, you can, no one can have adversity in their life. You know, everyone must be protected. Everyone's feelings must be protected. And I'm not saying go out and bully people by any means, but like this whole idea of the culture we live in, we're like any adversity is just so horrible and we have to protect ourselves. Like, but yeah, it goes back to what horribly. we spoke about a few months ago with our boy from little giant. Like, Oh, he yeah. blocked, another, he blocked my Instagram well, like right? Bryce Comics blocks my Instagram and then blocks the podcast Instagram like he thinks that there's not other people out there that I can just go on their page so I can't read or I can't see this post right like yeah I'm sorry like it's I'm gonna find it and I'm gonna talk about it right like just because you block someone doesn't quiet them and then it also makes you look like there's well, something yeah, what's, wrong what's he afraid of that's the exactly. question to me it's like what are you afraid of and you you put it out here to like you put it out to ask people what their opinion was. You got an opinion you didn't like and you just silenced it. So, I mean, that's what we, that's what it is now. We're in the culture of silencing the people we don't like. Um, hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Who's trash maybe? Happens. Let me see if I got blocked. I got blocked from little giants too, didn't I? Oh yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, we're all, that's yeah. a, that was a whole big thing. And so if, we don't know, yeah. if you don't know what we're talking about, go, go about two months back to our old episodes for anybody who's new to listening to the, the channel so well bry's comics definitely didn't didn't block me but i definitely don't follow him either so uh, yeah. well that's probably why so but I, it's always fun so again you know feel free uh you know if bry wants to come if you want to you know you want to tell bryce to come on here and uh you know let's go we'll talk about it i got no problems i just think it's again it's extremely funny how I, yeah i just i guess works. i don't understand i don't understand the point of this like um if he's not keeping, okay, so it would make more sense to me if you wanted to keep it for yourself, right? Like you're like, hey, so let's let's take the Afro book, okay, for example. Mm -hmm. Let's say the Afro book, like boom, the medals, kind of like what you said. Do two medals. We'd want one for you, one for me. Get rid of the rest because they're special. They're special to us. We want to be the only ones that have them. You know, like I can understand. I can understand that. I'm like, okay, it's kind of weird yeah. and not, I don't want to say selfish isn't necessarily the word. It's kind of weird. But like, whatever. Oh, it's egotistical. What are you talking about? Cause then God, if you ever want to sell that, how can you prove? Right. True. I guess, but it's just kind of, I mean, if no one knew about it, no one knew about it. I, I don't know, whatever, but like, it makes more sense to me if you wanted to keep it for yourself, but he did it. And then he, he gave it away. Like, I, I don't know, man. I don't, again, I can't even make, con I can't even question. I can't even like ask questions on it. So, so then just to like, so, <laughs> <laughs> I just like the end result of this doesn't make sense to me. Like what's he hope to gain from this? So it looks to 15 me 15 like, minutes of fame. That's all. Oh, that yeah. was another thing. It's just like, it's a it's, post. He, got he talked Instagram about it. Out of it. Yeah, yeah. Cause he talked about like, Oh, hopefully no one else does this because it's, you know, and I, that's what I kind of said. I was like, it's like someone just having their 15 minutes of fame because like, yeah, you're going to do that. Now what's going to happen is someone else is going to do this. And then they're going to be like, Oh, I have this one of one DC or I have this one of one in image comic. And now you're just making manipulating the comic book community. And like, there's always new people in this community and they're like, 
oh my god it's like a one of one it's good. like you want one of one stuff get a sketch by oa yeah that's one of one. yeah yeah i mean it's a it's a cool cover i would never seek it out if it was one of 1000 uh it's not for me you know obviously mm-hmm. everyone has their own uh their own but um yeah i don't know i don't get it man i don't get it yeah. but what a pussy <laughs> stop blocking people dude like I, you'll never see you or i or the podcast block anyone like troll away dude like yeah, honestly i welcome a troll <laughs> i welcome funny. a troll because we'll just come right back at you but yeah, yeah I, I mean i, I blocked somebody on on whatnot because i told him to flat out call me i gave him my phone number i hit him up on instagram i go yo here's my phone number and we were going back and forth and I was like, do you want to phone? I was, he's like, do you really want me to call you? I go, yeah, I really want to. I really want to talk to you because I was like, I don't want to do this keyboard warrior stuff. Like, yeah, I want to have a conversation. Like, I'm a man. Like, let's do it. Yeah. And then, of course, but he actually he blocked me. And then I ended up block. I don't even think I blocked him. I think he blocked me on whatnot. And then I was just like, I'm done. So have you heard? Have you heard like about this from anyone else? Has anyone no. else said anything to you about you being blocked or mentioned no. it to you? Nobody. I don't care. I don't and this care. all happened today. Well, I mean, I think I commented last week, and this was something that was oh, on the well, docket to talk about this week since oh, okay. we were just so busy with Rocksteady last So week. it's been a while. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, it's been a while. So I don't know when he officially blocked me, but obviously I didn't get a response. So I figured last, whatever, let's call it like Wednesday, Thursday, whenever that post mm-hmm. was. Yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, let's uh, let's move on. Let's move out of the community. And uh, <laughs> Is he part of the community? When you block people, when you cut out the community, can he even be called part of the community? Whatever you want to do, man. Whatever you want to do. Another thing to unravel. Yeah. So uh, let's kind of get into some uh, some news articles for the episode. Uh, this is it's been a slow week, but I mean we're always changing up, you know, what we find. So uh, this is just I, I I sent this to Zach mm-hmm. and a few other people on Instagram that have read this article, and I think it's it's absolutely hilarious. So this is over <laughs> at the Pedestrian TV. Uh, Hugh Hefner's son has started an OnlyFans, but the reason behind his account is truly unexpected. So, of course, Hugh Hefner's son, Martin, has started his own OnlyFans, but the reason is uh, not for sex, Hmm. but for the love of comics and Pokemon cards. Um, So he quoted, I joined OnlyFans, one, because I, I believe that nudity... There is nothing wrong with nudity or sexuality. He told the publication, I really like comic books. I really like Pokemon cards. I'm a collector. There is only, this is like a way for me to get to know you, but some income so I can buy those Pokemon cards that I really want. Okay. That's, that's what we're doing now. We're not, I I would think he's got a lot of money. Yeah. I don't able to go ahead and like buy whatever card he wants. Right. Or whatever comic he wants, but clearly, his dad just didn't give him enough money. <laughs> yeah. So he's one of four children, the second youngest son. Um, and he created an old man fans. And I mean, the guy's like, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know what he looks like. He definitely, his tagline says that he's bisexual AF. Um, so, okay. He's married. I thought one of the, the um, interesting parts of the article was when he was like, uh, he says, what does he say here? He's talking about his wife who said she doesn't seem who doesn't seem too fond of his OnlyFans endeavor. He says mm-hmm. she would rather me not be on OnlyFans, but what's more important to her is me pursuing my dreams or my interests, taking risks. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if she want, he says, if she wanted to do an open relationship, we'll talk about it. If she wanted to do anything sexual, that's a conversation that we have no matter what, and we are always having it. Um, so this guy's life, this guy, t- let's talk about entitlement here. <laughs> this guy's <laughs> like, like, this article is so absurd. His dreams and his taking risks, the taking risks of this gentleman's life is starting an only fan so he can buy comic books and Pokemon. That's the biggest risk this guy has in his existence. So, um, you know what though? More power to him, bro. Um, I, who's tuning into this? I can't, I don't know. Like who's, well, he said he's bi, him? so you know other males, maybe other females that find him sexual. I mean, I don't even know what he posts. You know, does he like sit there naked, like jacking off with a Charizard? He's very, <laughs> he's very gaunt. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry, graphic at, people. So I'm, I'm looking at pictures of him. He's very gaunt. He's like, yeah, he probably he's tall. He looks tall, and he probably weighs a buck ten. Wet, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um. He's striking like features, I guess. I mean, he's not 
unattractive, I guess. I was like a dude, but yeah, yeah. I don't know, dude. I, don't, <laughs> I also do. I, <laughs> granted, I'm not super. I don't have an OnlyFans account. I'm not super savvy with OnlyFans, but if I'm making a guess, I'm assuming that OnlyFans is predominantly the money makers are women because it's mainly dudes who are subscribing. Yeah. So uh, I don't know. Maybe, dude. Fuck, good. Good for you. But like that, I think that was my first question to you. Was like, does this guy not have enough money? I, I mean, come on. Like what for real. Like I, I get it. Four. I, you know, he had four kids. Still, like he's got to He had to be worth millions of dollars. Millions ah, of dollars. Dear. And now you're just going to start like your OnlyFans because you want to have a hobby. Like I have a hobby too. It's called buying and selling. Let's see what his. Which one's his? So he had four kids. Who's his mother? Um, let's oh, see. I curious now i'm curious about who his mother is i wanted to look up his wife but i didn't even bother i just thought the article was hilarious and i think i feel like people like need to find out like why we spend hundreds and thousands of dollars on cards because this is this is what we do we don't have jobs you know right that's like the thing it's like you i our listeners we all work we all have jobs mm -hmm. we you know sell stuff and we go out and we save and we buy that card or comic or video game or whatever statue and he's just like, I'm gonna do OnlyFans so I can buy. Here you go. Here's his mom. She's a looker. She's good looking. Okay. Yeah. Kimberly Conrad. Yeah. Kimberly Conrad. Yeah. Sure. 1962. Yeah. Playmate 1989. Yeah. Sure. Why not? Whatever. Yeah. But it's again, we're. I don't know. Is she a fan of Pokemon? Does she like Ash Ketchum? <laughs> <laughs> who's he trying to be is he trying to be uh what's his name logan paul i guess that yeah that's well yeah that was even in the you know part of the yeah. article as well because he bought that pretty expensive card last year and we all talked about that last year when uh he got duped on the, the pokemon box dude i just figured it out yes. i know what's happening i know exactly what's happening so they set this up this is a conspiracy unfolding right before our eyes and it's for you first heard it here on the comic con podcast this article comes out right about pokemon about this guy this dude's gonna end up with the one ring Pokemon card. Oh, they the magic! They set it up. Yeah, the, ma the magic card. They set it up, and now, now that you know about him. Oh my god! They've just manipulated. They just bribe comics to this dude. They manipulated the market, <laughs> and this guy's gonna end up with the one ring. Poor newbies at home, breaking packs, no one ring, and porn star guy, Marston I, I, Hefner is getting it. I really want. I I want to see if i took all the money that i've seen people post and being like oh i'm unboxing this like people that we know mm -hmm. the amount of money spent and just combine that i would buy i would have a pretty good golden age batman book right now yeah oh yeah like i'm telling you the the when it gets pulled or if i mean i i don't think it's been pulled because it would have been all over the internet and the news when it gets pulled I'll tell you right now, it's going to be a big time streamer. It's not going to be anybody like you or I yeah, that it's, it's bought some, like a some, case. It's right. They, or some guy who bought it from like his local LCS or something. Yes. The card market is the most manipulative market in history. Like, mm -hmm. and that's a hundred percent. Like these people on TikTok and uh, Twitter that do these breaks, they're giving these cards people. Like, I don't know if you know this, it's not like comics. It's completely like legitly illegal and it's just crazy the way it is so yeah but let's get out of the hugh hefner son and um let's talk about a trailer that just dropped this week yeah um raven the hunter sony pictures mm -hmm. did let's you watch the ahead. red band i did watch the red band okay so so there's a lot of heat on this there was a lot of heat let's talk about some build-up before before we get into it. there's some build up about this about like the stills that came out about his um his outfit everyone was liking it to kevin sorbo and hercules and didn't like his costume and stuff like that mm -hmm. so there was a little bit of hate before that um there's probably been a little bit of hate anyway from myself included just because it's part of like the sony universe who hasn't made a good movie yet so mm -hmm. there's a little skepticism for me for sure um i my general opinion on this was and I watched the red band and I honestly, I don't know what people were so angry about. Like I didn't think it looked horrible by no means to my, like, you're not going to hear me claiming it's the greatest. It's the next flash or better than dark Knight or whatever. Like, and it didn't look amazing, but I thought it looked interesting. I loved it when he took the bear trap to the dude's head. Like that shit was dope. Mm -hmm. um, I know I talked to Gabe about it and Gabe made fun of the fact that like, 
blood fell in his open wound. He's like, what is this, like 1960s, like Marvel characters, how they get their power? So yeah, that was, but who knows? I mean, it may be more involved than that. Um, I didn't think it looked horrible. Um, I think my biggest thing that I didn't like about it was he's got an accent in the beginning and he doesn't have an accent later. So, and he's like, you know, what is he, Russian, right? He's Russian. And so, yeah. I don't know, man. I, I'm, I'm, I like, what's his name? Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson. I like him. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. What are your thoughts? Fucking terrible, bro. <laughs> it's like, what, so break, break down like what stupid. you didn't like about it. Okay, yes. Let's let's immediately start with how all these Sony characters get their get their powers. Well, that's every that's bro, that's Spider-Man. You guys are I don't know, but all you is, fools who like Spider-Man so much, you encouraged Spider-Man and now it's you're seeing it play out and you're like, "Why is it happening this way?" Cuz that's how it let's, happened. Let's come. But like this is not Craven the Hunter. Like he's he doesn't get bit by a tiger with his dad or whatever like that's not his he doesn't lion, not, sir. Lion, whatever. Sorry, whatever. Giraffe. He could have gotten bit by a giraffe for all I care. <laughs> like, Does he even have powers? Honestly, I'm like people are pregnant. I, I know that's why power. we're gonna get no, I he definitely doesn't have he has like potions. He I'm reading right now, regularly ingested potions made yeah. from jungle herbs. Yeah, okay. He has like six cents, almost kind of like yeah. Daredevil is basically, right? He doesn't have he doesn't have like this ability because he got bit by a lion. Like that's really yeah. where we're going for this. Like and then, so that's that's number one. Okay. Um, we know rhinos a in it. Radioactive lion. A radioactive lion in the Serengeti. <laughs> you got rhino coming in, and we saw a very clip of him. Like the guy's arm is like a what's gonna? I, I, he's gonna basically turn into a rhino, like in a way, you know, like a. Yeah. He's like basically gonna look like Abomination Man with like a rhino head. Like that's yeah. realistically what he's gonna look like. Yeah, and we had a version of Rhino like that. What was it? That was actually, was it the Ultimate Universe was actually more of a Rhino rather than mm-hmm. like a guy in a Rhino suit? Which granted, bro, like, let's be honest, the original Spider-Man, the Rhino suit, like what doofus put on a Rhino suit? There's nothing worse than that. And then Amazing Spider-Man, even the mechanical suit was arguably probably worse than a dumbass in a, in a cosplaying as a Rhino, so... You gotta do but something. I think any of the '60s, I mean, to be honest, whatever. The, everybody dresses up, right? Let's yeah. let's take a look at it. Like you have like Green Goblin, Hobgoblin. You know, you have Mysterio. Like they're all corny if you mm-hmm. think about it. But they we've figured out a way to like modernize them and make them real life characters. This movie looks good if it wasn't called Craven the Hunter. Okay, I could see like like it's an awesome action movie like it's yeah he the whole beginning sequence where he's like running and jumping at the car and yeah that's yeah the action cool. is great yeah but like as soon as it's like obviously you know it's craven the hunter so it's just like you're like wow this is really where we're going for craven the hunter movie well yeah i mean when they announced craven the hunter i had the same opinion that i had when they announced madam web like what the hell like why are we making and it's just the classic Marvel Sony BS of like, let's make this guy an anti-hero, right? So it's just the same Venom shit. Like we've talked about this. I've com- I complained about this ad nauseum about Marvel turning their villains into heroes so that they can, you know, promote them better. But um, the fact that Craven is coming out in his own movie before he's showing up in like a, uh, a Spider-Man movie, like this would be a great idea. Bring the same actor in a Spider-Man movie, Aaron Taylor Johnson as Craven. He looks great. I think that, when you saw him in the costume, like the actual, like with the lion fur. Yeah, stuff, he did look good at the very end. Yeah, in the scene, dude, there's some really cool scenes in that trailer, I thought. Like when he turns around the, with the crossbow and blasts that dude, that shit was cool. Like I liked, I like how adult in the red band it was. Um, mm-hmm. like he was actually like killing people. But there's that's cool what we part. saw. But here's the thing. Like we, same thing happened with the red band trailer for like Morbius. Like yeah. Morbius looks so cool. Like when he's fighting on the ship. The first, you know, the first time you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you know, this is going to be awesome. It's violent. It's Morbius. And then you see it and you're like, Ugh. yeah, the story was bad yeah, for sure. Uh, that's, that's why I don't think people need to get their, their hopes up for this because I cannot oh, yeah. see this after Sony's just progression of their movies has just been, you know, I mean, and let's real quick, they, let's talk yeah. about this. They, they canceled or it's off the release of bad bunnies. El Muerto. Yes, I was going to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. yeah they just can't. Good. <laughs> Another garbage movie. I don't know why they're doing this. Like, 
we're creating this whole Spider-Man universe without a Spider-Man. Right? It doesn't make any sense, dude. Uh, exactly. It's like what universe is Craven in, right? Is he in the Morbius uh, Venom universe? You know or what? Or is he in like, because then obviously at the end of Morbius, you had Michael Keaton's Vulture. Like where, mm -hmm. where, where does it sit, Sony? There was only, there's on, and I'm thinking about this. There's only one way to make this work is like, you you create the Spamunk universe, right? And you have all these Spider-Man characters and you bring in Miles Morales and you don't do Peter Parker. Like, cause that's literally the only thing that would make any sense. I'm not saying I want mm -hmm. that to happen by any means, but bringing in Miles to this universe would make more sense now than bringing in Tom Holland. That doesn't make any sense. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, the crossover, like, bro, I, the crossover where we had with Venom in the Marvel universe and uh, was Spider-Man No Way Home, the post credits, like, God, dude, like, What's going on? Like you said, where does this sit? What's happening here? I don't understand. Like, um, like I like your idea of bringing in Miles because, like, you know, yeah, we, sure, I guess, Vulture yeah. knows who Spider Man is, right? Mm -hmm. So if Miles is brought into live action, and you know, you got Venom, Morbius, Vulture, Craven, and Rhino all in this universe, and then when like Vulture sees Spider Man, he's like, "That's not Spider Man. I know who Spider Man is." then but it's it's obviously miles that's cooler right mm -hmm. that actually kind of makes sense then to have him in this universe be like oh yeah there's no peter parker there's this guy yeah and i mean you could you could kind of retcon it that way anyway with um because with like vulture or not vulture with venom kind of crossing over in the mcu they have kind of like hinted that like now everything's all jacked up because the multiverse so now it mm -hmm. could be like holland is out of that universe in the mcu if you will and like that one doesn't have like a peter now i, I don't know yep. dude this is talking about this is frustrating because it's just so ridiculous that you have to have these conversations like that they're making these movies like oh my god what conversations are we going to have when madam web comes out the, the movie i have like couldn't care less about but I still think I would have liked to see that better than El Muerto. Oh, yeah. El Muerto, yeah. So Let's be real. Like, there is some cool characters in this movie, though. I mean, like, you do have, obviously, Craven and, and Calypso. You got mm -hmm. Chameleon, Rhino, the Foreigner. So there are some actual, like, characters with history, Spider-Man history and lore in this. Um, I don't know, though, dude. But it also seems like a waste, too. Like, the character of the Foreigner is, like, the main villain, right? Who has ties to Silver Sable. Um, which now we also know that they're doing like they're supposedly going to be doing a Silver Sable movie. I mean, it's all just like every time I yeah. hear what they're going to do, I'm like, no, please don't, please don't. Yeah, well, if it ever comes out, obviously. I don't want them to ruin anything, but it's probably going to happen. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I didn't think it looked horrible, but I actually now that like you mention it, I didn't think Morbius looked horrible, and it was. <laughs> so <laughs> now, now you got that implanted in my mind. Um, told you. that's that's what that's what i do and that's what you do to me like you <laughs> you make me think of things and then like you're like oh man i didn't, I didn't think of that right yeah. and now you do and now it's in there so yeah let's oh, he I looks cool though yes or no he looks cool he looks cool i need him just to go back and do kick ass three. Oh, i know but dude he's any he, he's so buff though now like he's huge compared uh, to like he was, he was kick ass right one oh, and two he was kind of like skinny ass. yeah oh i did too but then then he got massive for Quicksilver and he got he's like massive for Craven. The, I'll tell you what, the poster of this movie might be the best thing about this movie. Yeah, because it's like a classic image of him. Right. Like that's, yeah, sitting on that throne. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool, but the, the posters don't put people in the seats, bro. <laughs> <laughs> right. No joke. Posters no joke. definitely don't put people in the seats. So we'll see what happens. The project is billed as the next chapter of Sony's shared universe. Next chapter of what? A book that doesn't make any sense? Like, what the fuck is going on here? I don't get it. Like, chapter one, random story. Chapter two, completely unrelated, random story. Like, no connection. Oh, well. Anyway, we'll so, see. That's, uh, that's the that's the news for the week. Um, let's kind of wrap it up and get right into some, what are we currently reading? So uh, <clears throat> what do you got, man? What's uh, This week was big. I yeah, think there's a lot a, of stuff this week. This was a good week, man. Um, and I told you about I told you about two of these books to pick up. So if you're playing. Yeah, on you were lucky. I don't know why that happened because yeah. it's not really like a holiday week. Like, I think, I don't know what happened. My, my shop got the books early and I ended up getting them on like Thursday of last week. Um, yeah, that's like super... And he was going out of town, so my shop owner, so he was like, hey, you can come grab them. So I cruised in real quick. But yeah. 
man, um, there's some awesome books this week. The two that I really want to talk about first, um, <clears throat> ultimate invasion, ultimate yep. invasion, number one by mm-hmm. Jonathan Hickman. Really cool. I, um, I've really liked even since like we've talked about the ultimate universe. I'm a big ultimate universe fan. I've got the omnibuses back behind me. I really enjoyed it. Of course there's parts that fell off. Everyone knows that, but I enjoyed the ultimate universe. And I think one of the best things, actually the best thing that came out of ultimate universe, it's not miles Morales by any means. It's the maker. (laughs) And the maker is so cool. The maker showing up in like absolute carnage The maker showing up in like other venom titles and like, kind of being around in the Marvel universe, the MCU 616 has been really awesome. And just an evil Reed Richards, who's like evil, but not evil. That's, I think that's kind of the thing that's so ominous about this guy is like, he's not evil. Like Dr. Doom trying to take over the world. He's just very much like, you know, I'm so much smarter than you guys. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want to do for my Mm -hmm. benefit. So, um, not to spoil too much about this, but the the whole idea here is the maker and Miles are the only two characters <clears throat> in the six one six from sixteen ten Marvel sixteen ten, the MC or the Ultimate Universe. Mm-hmm. So they uh, he's trying to get back into the uh, the his he's universe. trying to make the Ultimate Universe basically right. He's trying to remake it and get back into it, and. Um, he offers Miles like, "Hey, you want to come back?" The Illuminati are tracking after him. He's he's held he's held prisoner. I can't remember how he got prison like imprisoned previously because I feel like last time I saw him was in the Venom storyline. Um, yeah, there was another storyline after that, and then I can't I remember where else that. he showed up. But yeah. yeah, however, he got imprisoned. So, but there's a crossover in the Sony Spider-Man game. The Spider-Man 2 universe. He ends up there's a little bit of crossover spoiler alert in in that in Ultimate Invasion. So I must have missed that. This is the last page. Okay. Yeah. So they mentioned they mentioned the um they mentioned the universe, and it's actually the same designation as Spider-Man 2, the new song. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. And it's it's Hickman. So obviously, like who knows where it's gonna go with this. It should be really interesting. Um, I liked it, I thought it was really fun, and I'm excited. So, yeah, I'm with you on that. There was definitely some cool stuff with the ultimate invasion and just him going to like the different spots and grabbing what he needs to grab. And yeah. And like, uh, what was that stuff too? Right. I mean, they kind of talked about it and they didn't, that's kind of cool too. Like they're like, well, we grabbed all this stuff and then he just like made a portal. So it was kind of cool. They didn't make them like MacGuffins or anything, you know, like they just were like, dude, he just got it. He just got what he needed. (laughs) and He's out. So, um, yeah, no. And here's the question. Oh, so then the epilogue, and I don't want to spoil too much. So the epilogue is the Spider-Man 2 video game. Yeah, I'm p- opening up right now. Hold on a second. Okay. So yeah, just 61, to kind of... 60. Okay, so 6160. Yeah. yeah, so... Yeah, so... Yeah, he does something that is pretty awesome. Like, yeah. He's going to do this, like, kind of, like, in these epilogues or even maybe in the next issue. Pretty interesting stuff. It's right. kind of, like, Flashpoint. So, yeah, yeah. So something kind of happens in that... Yeah, that should we ruin it? I don't know. No, don't ruin it. Let okay. people. Ruin it. So yeah, he goes to sixty one sixty. But so when I read that page, I very much was like, "Hmm, we know Spider Man Two's coming out, right?" And all of a sudden, he's got the Venom suit. Is that going to play into that? How does that play into that continuity there? Mm-hmm. How does that all work? You know what I mean? So um, it's Jonathan Hickman, so it's probably going to be super over explained and intricate. But um, it was really cool. Check it out. Awesome book. And there's a really great, I just picked it up as well. Um, waiting for it to get in is if you're into those, what's it? Um, oh gosh. John, is it John Christopher Tyler? The John, negative? Oh, John Tyler Christopher. John Tyler nice. Christopher. Yeah. They, he does a great negative on that one of Miles Morales. I just picked that one up. Nice. Well, and then my, my pick of the week, man, Incredible Hulk number one. Really cool. Did you read it? I did not. It's still on my list to read. Oh, okay. So there was so much. So. So we kind of talked about this when they announced it, right? Like the last Hulk run was not good. And then they kind of mentioned that this one was going to be more horror. And it is. It shows up, dude. Um, It's very much super horror like themes. And basically Bruce Banner is fighting the Hulk. The Hulk's taking over his body in like different places and like destroying things. They are at war. Hulk is not happy about being put in that stupid ass spaceship room or whatever the hell that was. Like he is pissed. So, uh really really cool stuff i'm excited about this title it has very much the feel that like immortal hulk had in terms of that like gritty horror 
Um, and I'm excited. It was good. It was really, really good. Check that book out for sure. It, it's written by da, 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 Philip Kennedy Johnson. The Age of Monsters has begun. Is kind of what's going on. Oh, and that, oh, that's what it was. There's a great panel in there where it kind of like, um, one of the villains is like hunting down monsters in the universe. And there's a panel that cuts to like a bunch of different, you see like man thing, you see ghost rider, you see all these different monsters in the, in the Marvel universe. And I'm excited to see what happens with that. Everyone knows I'm a big ghost rider fan. So we'll see. Maybe a nice little crossover. Read it, dude. I want, I really want to see what you think about it. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's on my docket to, to read. There was just there was so much of stuff this week. So um, let's kind of get into to my stuff. Uh, I do have hot garbage this week. Ooh. And I don't know if you read this, but Venom 21. Yeah, I read it. Um, yeah. The dialogue, the dialogue between bad. Bedlam and Eddie is like something out of like the most cliche of every like buddy cop film or like 80s or 90s movie yeah, basically little right? quips and stuff like yeah. it, they're just they're just so stupid you know like uh he, he basically they, they talk about like what like bedlam grabs his head one time and he's just like oh how are these apples smash he's like how's these apples yeah, smash right. i'm just like oh my god i was like that's where we're going and then it's just like there's other like little things in the fight scene that are just makes bedlam like just so stupid right mm -hmm. uh I mean, it kind of it kind of goes nowhere. Obviously, towards the end, there is obviously a, a direction where Bedlam and Eddie Brock are now one. I mean, you can kind of see that even from like the cover. So we'll see where it goes, but definitely hot garbage. It was just like reading it, like the first like fifteen pages. I was just like, this is just horrible. So. Yeah, and I wonder too, and I felt like it was kind of built that way. Like it was basically like the advertisement was like this this book is going to be a complete battle. And I think it was just kind of like, and not to def defending it by any means, but it was mm -hmm. basically like a a stepping stone to what's happening next. They did like this whole issue where it was just a battle. There's really no substance to it. And it's just moving that story. But yeah, it was pretty goofy. Mm. Um, I would say my honorable mention, Wonder Woman 800. Oh, I didn't read it. Yeah. So it's it's definitely like an oversized issue. So it's it's pretty interesting. Like it kind of starts off with, you don't know this, but, and this is not really too much of a spoiler. Like she's, so basically she's doing this, Wonder Woman is doing this ritual, like in a dream. And she's basically meeting like all the characters of the past. So like all the wonder, wonder girls, like Yara Flora is in there. Like oh, cool. Artemis is in there, even like Cassie's in there. And eventually she gets, it's almost like in their dreams and she's trying to do like this cleansing. So Batman gets in there and Superman interesting first part. But of course the main thing, obviously why this book is, was you know prompt to be good is because we get the first appearance of trinity we have the daughter mm -hmm. uh and it's i would say it's definitely the future because of course it's batman and superman but ba superman is john ken batman is obviously damian wayne if you've ever read any of the the storylines where damian becomes batman it's the total batman suit right so it sets it up where them those three characters they try they're gonna go find something you don't know what and basically batman gets into a battle like an unstoppable battle like superman endures all this pain that's like endless and she basically confronts her mother obviously wonder woman and it's like old she's older and they're trying to break someone out of prison and you're trying to find out who it is like i don't think it's her father but the person is basically going to tell you who and like how you know basically she came to be so okay so you, there's no answers there's book. no answer there's not much but with wonder woman relaunching in i think like a month or two like after night terrors because this whole like everything's kind of stopping like for the next two months because like all the issues whether they're relaunching for the dawn of dc or they're just completely stopping for the next month or so is because of night terrors so uh 800 is the last issue july and august has the night terrors for wonder woman and then a new number one starts and you'll learn more and what happens in the number one and the annual there's going to be an annual too as well in there as well mm. so. i kind of hate it when they do that like um the stopping i mean you know, with big titles it's okay you know like batman will be fine but mm -hmm. um like for example the, there's the title the joker the man who stopped laughing right and it, mm -hmm. it went to like number nine and then it's stopping because of like you said night terrors and it's just kind of like it loses the it, like those titles lose their momentum, man. Like I kind of almost am like, just keep those. You should just keep those going, like because mm -hmm. someone's not the people aren't going to remember. In yeah, like two months they're going to do. You know, you're going to 
especially DC fans, you're gonna just read the Night Terror stuff and then like, all right, so oh, Wonder Woman's got a new number one, and what what happened? What was the last like thing that happened in three months ago? So right, um, but yeah, it was a good issue. I, I think Trinity looks cool. I think there's a possibility that she'll have a future. So let, let's hope. I mean, you know, that's you think that one character will hold value. Yeah, like there's so obviously we talked about this. There's a couple ratio variants for it. There's only one store exclusive. Uh, David Nakayama did one for Midtown Comics. So maybe get the Midtown, maybe get the high ratio ones, like the one in 25s or the one in 50s if you can. And then, uh, you know, see where she is. Uh, you know, you talked about it when we first discussed it. You know, let's hopefully she's almost like a rebel. Let's like, you know, she's not the status quo of Wonder Woman, right? She's a little different. Like we want her to be something not just, you know, carbon copy of every other Wonder Girl. Right, we'll and, because, and that's what's cool about Damien. You know what I mean? Damien's not quite like Batman, but it's all, also what kind of sucks about Superman is every Superman's pretty much like Superman. Like Jonathan's just like Superman. Um, yeah. So it it would be nice to see her be a little bit different. Like I said, it, it would have been better if they did it if they made her a boy. In my opinion, that would have been the move. Yeah, that would have been wild. That yeah. definitely would have been wild. So, um, uh, and last but not least, my pick of the week, and I don't know if you're still on this, the Nightwing 105. You read Nightwing? No, no, I stopped Nightwing a while ago. Um, okay, but yeah. uh, it's it's obviously it's still written by Tom Taylor, and I, I've I spoken about like these issues before when they do this. It's all done in like the first person view, so mm -hmm. like everything that's happening, right? Every panel you're seeing, everything that happens in front of Dick's eyes. Like so, there's times where he's fighting, there's times where he's like running or jumping, and you just see like you'll see his arms, right, or you'll see like his legs. You know, he first wakes up and he's in bed with um, his dog. And I can't think of his, the dog's name, but and Barbara's there. And it's just like it's done so well that you're still following the story because it's obviously yeah. it's like almost the reader. The reader is Dick instead of like seeing like him in yeah, like, like a the point of view. Yeah. Yes. Like the, the first person point of view is just so good to see. And, you know, I, not too much, obviously, because of the storyline. I just liked it because of the action and the way that it's done from the artist's perspective right that's mm. just what that's what you know made me you know really enjoy this one and i mean i, I would even throw in like dc titans the number two came out this week oh, i was gonna ask you that's the one book i haven't finished yet Is okay it pretty good yeah yeah you know obviously what happened in the last it's issue we see yeah. wally west die um and then it kind of picks up and there's some stuff that happens in this one but i like and i like the titan storyline too i think it's yeah i'll it's probably good. talk about it with issue three so we'll go from there so um that's it with what are we currently reading for the week uh season three episode 25 anything else man before we get out of here 24 right i think it's 25 oh okay yeah we're there um no man just uh it kind of feels crazy that it's almost into june already um yeah closing in on july closing on the terrific con how yeah. was your father's day it was a good father's day good first father's day um i enjoyed it I, my mother-in-law came over and made some amazing enchiladas and then allowed us to take a nap while she watched the baby. She couldn't have asked for like a better <laughs> Father's Day gift. So that was really awesome. I filled my belly with enchiladas and then passed the hell out. So uh, it was nice. nice. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. You get to spend, uh, spend first Father's Day. Just yeah, man. Yeah. And you, your how was it with your family? Just chilling, man. You know, yeah, yeah just chilling, uh, hanging out, eating, drinking, watching soccer. So that was my Sunday. So yeah. Cool. But uh, this weekend, there is a show out in uh, Morristown, New Jersey. You got the Garden State Comic Fest. I may be hitting it up one day. Um, and then, uh, you know, of course, follow me on Whatnot. You can always find me doing some sales. So that's it, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Peace oh, out. And if you yeah. haven't checked it out, the Flash review we did as well. Yes. Oh, yeah, that's right. We dropped the Flash review. Please check that out if you've seen it. So. All right. Later. <laughs>